how's Jamar Brown uh, looking out there at safety linebacker? Is he uh, okay with that? Knee? And then how's he been doing these first couple of weeks? Yeah, he's been doing well. Um, he's banged up a little bit, so he's been in and out of the training room, but he's going to be fine. Um, we just got to continue to work through that. But, you know, when he was out there, he was doing a good job. Um, and he's going to be a good football player. He's playing multiple positions for us right now, whether it be safety, whether it be dime linebacker or wheel linebacker. So he's doing a bunch of multiple things for us right now. Ben? Uh, what have you seen kind of from your first unit defensive line, and what are you kind of looking more for from some of those backups? I'll tell you what, you know, you look at the combination of Jabari Ellis, Kier Thomas, um, Zach Pickens, and Rick Sandich. Um, those four guys have played a lot of football for us. Um, and then you look at guys like Alex Huntley, um, guys like Micaiah Scott, guys that's going to come in and contribute as well. Um, so I, I like where we are there. Um, we got to continue to develop. I think Coach Rock is doing a great job. He's extremely hard on those guys, and they need it. And um, it's been really good, and it's been really fun to, to be around him as he developed those guys into guys that way. And then outside at defense end, you look at Aaron Sterling, you look at Brad, you look at uh, Tonka, you look at um, from a buck position, you look at JJ, you look at – um, Hot Rod, um, Rodriguez. I mean, you look at some of those guys right there that are coming along. So I'm excited about where we are in that department. We got to keep developing those guys. Um, you know how it is, man, with this, you know, with the COVID stuff going on. Like I tell our guys all the time, everyone have to be ready. Um, everyone can't, no one can be assuming that they're not going to play because we can hear something on a Friday, something on a Wednesday that a guy's not up. The next guy got to be ready to, 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 to come in and be ready to play. So it's, it's that mentality, and we're getting all the guys ready for those situations. Colin Taylor? I guess the, the word dime linebacker has been kind of thrown around a lot for people that may not know a whole lot about football, myself included. I guess kind of what do you – what is the dime linebacker and what kind of skills do you look for when you're evaluating a guy to play that spot? Yeah, so you look at a guy that has instincts in the box. He's big enough that he can fit in the box, fit some runs, um, be able to disengage off some offensive linemen at times. But he have to be the guy that's more of a combo guy that can do some covering stuff for us. Um, we ask him to go in the middle of the field and be a deep part of the middle of the field a lot of times. We ask him to play some man-to-man, -man, maybe trail technique on a receiver. So he have to be a versatile guy like a linebacker but has a DB experience, so more so like a nickel. You know, so if you had to just say what is a dime, it will be identical to a nickel, probably a little bigger because we're going to ask him to be more in the box more so than we would a nickel. Gene Sapico. You just said how everybody's going to have to be ready this year. Um, do you think across college football we're going to see at some point because of, you know, COVID situations, more walk-ons than ever playing meaningf meaningful snaps? I mean, you never know. I mean, to be honest with you, because of the contact tracing and all the stuff that goes on with it, you have no idea how that's going to work out. So as a coach right now, we're trying to prepare as many guys as we can at different roles. And I had a big meeting with the DBs. It's about the more you know, the more you can help. Um, guys that as one positional guys, that, that, that ain't really what's hit anymore. You got to be guys that can play multiple spots. Um, it's more like an NFL roster when you start talking in terms of dealing with 53 people that's got to do different things and special teams. And all hands got to be on deck. And our guys know that. Um, and our, our guys prepared for that. And that's what we have to get ready to do as we move forward to September 26. Ben Brenner. Uh, hey, Coach. Um, I wanted to ask just, just what was it about Joey Hunter that made him a guy you wanted to to move from safety to corner, kind of in the, in, in the midst of camp, and and what does he sort of bring to that position in terms of length and his physicality? Yeah, he's a big dude. He got long arms. He got a, a big, long, wide um, arm frame, and, and we're excited about him. Um, he's a talented young man. He's working hard. He's trying. Um, we're playing him outside at corner because I think – you know, with his length and being able to play bump and run and things that he's able to do, um, I think he can help us out there a lot quicker than he can help us at safety. Um, but we're going to keep his foot in safety a little bit. And, you know, he played a little bit of nickel and some walkthroughs, and, and he'll do a little bit of that tomorrow in the scrimmage. Um, so we're excited about Joey. Joey got to keep continuing to develop, and um, he will. He's a hard worker, and he's going to be fine. Mike Cooper. Rob, Will last night was saying that in order for this defense to be successful this year, you guys are going to have to have Camp Smith, uh, Camp Smith step up. What have you seen? And I'm sure this could be a long answer, but what have you seen in terms of his growth from freshman year to now heading into year two? Well, first of all, he's gained a little weight, and, and don't don't get this misconstrued with a lot of weight. He's 182, 83 right now. He's a naturally thin guy, and um, he has to get bigger and stronger, and that's one of the things that he's been working on. 
but he's probably one of the quickest guys back there in the secondary as far as just his feet. Um, he does a great job with that. We're just working on some of the discipline things with his hands and grabbing and things like that. So, you know, I was on Twitter, Coach Muschamp and myself, and we saw that the Giants put some tennis balls in a couple of guys' hands. So we went out and utilized that and used that in our practice um, a couple of times, and we'll use it throughout the course of next week just to help us with some of the penalties that we got last year. And I think that can help Izzy, that can help him, that can help JC on some of the things that we got, just the handsy stuff. Um, but, you know, Cam's a guy who's very intelligent. Um, he do well in the classroom. He do well on the field. Um, and he's a guy that can learn everything. So now it's just utilizing skill set and just getting them more confident. And that's the one thing that Cam and, 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 and we talk about a lot is just the confidence of the of the player, you know, having the, 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 the confidence to go out and, and do what you're talented enough to do. And um, he's more than talented to do that. And um, right now I think it's good. He's getting pushed by Izzy, getting pushed by JC because they understand that we need him. And, um, and same thing with John Dixon. So those guys right there, and they're battling for that next spot, and they're doing a good job of it. David? T. Rob, I know that uh, Ernest has been out, but he will be coming back maybe next week or so. And Damani's been playing really well in his place. My question is, when Ernest comes back, is there going to be a true competition in there? Or has Ernest you know, done enough in the past to say he'll probably still take that starting role and Damani will kind of be the 1A guy? Yeah, right now it's a um, it's always competition, um, obviously. So nothing is given. But Ernest is a guy who who's played a lot of football for us, and and, and he played Mike for us, and he he's been a really good football player for us. Damani is a guy, and we wanted to train him for the first time at Mike because he never played that before. And um, I thought it was a great time while Ernest being out for Damani to get some of those reps like that. But Ernest, Sherrod. And and, 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 and and Damani, those guys will be fighting for who starts. And I think that's good for all of those guys because it's going to make them practice the right way. They're going to understand that it's a competition every week at that position. So we'll have no idea how that's going to work. You know, but those guys, it'll be up to those guys on how they play. Um, but, you know, I'm excited about getting Ernest back. He's been doing a little more with the football team as of late. You know, some of the walkthrough stuff that he can't do full speed stuff, but he, he can do some of the walkthroughs and things like that that we're having. So, so that's been um, exciting to see him out there and hear him out there because he's our vocal leader. Colin Taylor. T. Rob, are you pleased right now with where you are defensively in terms of forcing turnovers? I know that was kind of a big struggle last year. Where are you guys about halfway through camp? No, I, I wouldn't use the word pleased in that right now. We, we definitely need to get better. Um, I think our offense, they, they, they do a great job of protecting the football with the different things that Mike's doing over there. Um, so we got to do a, a better job of, of, of forcing fumbles more so than interceptions. I think that's got to be the next step, guys, second man in. And it's hard to do that when you're in third tempo and you're not tackling because you're worried about thudding the guy. You ain't worried about getting the football. Then we're blowing a whistle after the third. So I think, you know, the, the, the scrimmage will be indicative of where we are um, when we're bringing guys to the ground, some in some aspects of it, and um, next man in, thinking about the football and so on and so forth. So, you know, it'd be interesting to see how Saturday go as far as getting the football. Um, I'm excited about our guys. I told them they need to treat this as game day. Um, we're doing everything in the evening time as we would September 26th. So, so it'd be good for our guys to get that feeling of, of what game day is like and will it be. John Whittle's next. T-Rob, what, kind of, what are the goals for the scrimmage this weekend? What, were there, are there some things that you want to see different this scrimmage than, than what you saw in the first one last weekend? Yeah. You know, the one thing that I would say, I thought the effort was good. I didn't think it was fantastic. Um, and I asked our guys the other day, when you turn on the tape and you watch the game card play, what do you want someone to say about you? And um, you want them to say they're a relentless football team. And your tape should show that. And um, one thing that I told those guys, we ain't finishing guys off. We ain't doing the things that we need to do to, to, to when people turn on our tape, they're saying the stuff that we envision them saying about us. So I think that's one of the things that I'm looking for. Um, I'm looking for the older guys to not make any mistakes, uh, be able to communicate. They've been in this defense for quite a bit, and um, we hadn't changed a whole bunch. So those guys should be good as far as assignments is concerned. Now a young guy and, and that Garnet and White group, I mean, those guys, I, I told those guys play fast, and, and the mistakes are on me. Um, we need to limit the call list for those guys. If that's what we need to do for them to play fast, then that's what we'll do. But, you know, for the older guys, we're looking for some more turnovers, which we mentioned earlier, and then just have better, better, you know, uh, of an intimidating um, type style of play. And I think that's what we need to get on, and I think that's what our guys understand. Uh, I know Coach Muschamp 
said last week that that uh, stopping the run with the second team group was was not good enough. Uh, what what have you seen out of those guys over practice this week? Have have y'all been able to do a little bit better job of, of that? Um. I don't think we have, to be honest with you. I think that's something that we got to continue to work on and continue to talk about, and that goes into the details of discipline and doing your job um, and not trying to do something that you aren't supposed to do and try to make a play you aren't supposed to make. If it calls for you to stay in A-gap, stay in A-gap. And um, our guys are, are, are doing that, and I, I think they're, they're going to continue to get better at that. But that goes to sitting in the meeting room all right, with the whole defense and kind of going through a couple of plays with those guys. This is why this play wasn't successful, or vice versa. This is why this play was successful because we did our job. But um, we got to continue to do that. And you know, Bobo and his offense—they give you a bunch of different schemes, a bunch of different things to prepare for. And um, our guys got to do a great job of setting edges and things like that. And we getting better with it, um, not where we need to be um, by any means. But I, I think if we continue on the path that we're doing, we'll be fine. Um, and, and, and it's the communication with the young group. And that's probably what Coach Muschamp was referring to, just the communication of, of the young groups doing it right and, and, and staying in the gaps and doing the things like that that it takes to be a real good run stop in defense. David? Uh, T. Rob Mike was in here, and he uh, he might have been joking. I'm not really sure about saying he wouldn't mind seeing a couple of corners get a couple of receptions over on the wide receiver room. Is that a serious uh, thing? You know, have you guys had any serious reps with JC and Izzy? Maybe you know, going out yeah. to kind of well, – Well, not so far. We haven't had many. Um, I, they went over there a couple times and, and messed around. Um, but, you know, you look at how you're using Luke. You look at how he's using, you know, the carry on and some of those different guys. I mean, he's very creative, and um, that's something that I can foresee him doing. And uh, if those guys got the win to do it, um, we will, I would love for them and be happy for them to go out and help our football team in any capacity um, that they may be able to do that to. Um, but right now, those guys are, are, are perfecting their craft in, in, in the secondary, in that corner, understanding that they're going to have to play good outside for us to be successful. Go to Ben. Uh, Coach, last year you guys faced uh, probably one of the more impressive groups of offenses that anyone faced kind of in the country. Are, are there lessons that you guys can take from that and you can carry over into this year from the guys having sort of experienced that kind of thing last season? Yeah, I think it's always lessons when you're getting whooped. Uh, so, yeah, we played some experienced offense. We played some really good quarterbacks and really good, you know, offensive coordinators that was doing some different things. So, you know, we, we go back, we look at the tape, um, we look at our negative plays. That's the first thing. We hardly ever look at our positive plays. And this is what was good about it. I mean, that's something that, that, that as coaches, that's not a big priority for us. But as, as, as coaches, we want to point out the negative stuff and what can we do to correct this from happening again. And you look at back at the Tennessee game from last year, we gave up some explosive plays. You look at some of the Florida stuff coming out of the middle field with some of the safety play, wasn't what we wanted. So just different things like that. And really when it shows up in practice, you know, I think we do a good job as a staff and Coach Muschamp encourages us to go back and show them in between plays of what happened in practice and then when did that same play happen in the game and it looked the exact same way and it didn't work out. Um, so just trying to show those guys and give them some more visuals of certain things like that, I think that helps the guys. And, you know, we will go back as a staff and look through everything and make sure that we're on the same page with everything. We'll move from there. Colin Taylor. You kind of talked in your first availability about J.C., um, at punt return, how has he looked? Um, has he kind of taken that mantle a little bit? What have you seen from yeah. Jamie there as well? I think he's doing a really good job. We have um, some some good competition back there. Jamie Robinson been back there a bunch. Um, Trey Atkins been back there a bunch. Um, Xavier been back there a bunch, and even Shop been back there a bunch. So, you know, those guys are competing. We hadn't really just identified the guy yet. Um, so I think that'll be coming in the next couple of weeks or a week or so. Um, but they're all doing a great job and have equal amount of catches. And um, everything's being charted. And the guy that catch it the best and the guys that don't put the ball in jeopardy, guys that, you know, can communicate to the punt turn team to, 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 to get away from the football when it's on the ground, um, we got, you know, those guys going to play. So, you know, those guys understand it. They all want to do it. And that's, that's, that's the best thing about it because that hadn't always been the case. You know, some guys, you know, that punt is a little different back there. And um, I think those guys have stepped up to the table and they want to do it. And um, I'm excited about it. So they got to continue to work on it. But. They'll be ready to rock and be able to catch it and go, because that cost us a bunch of field position last year. Are you going to do any live punt this weekend in the scrimmage? 
Yeah, so we'll do some of that and um, just to get those guys some looks. And, you know, my biggest thing was on third down, we in a long series, third and eight, you know, they get it, third and six, they get it. All right, then we get them off the field the next third down and JC or Jamie or whoever end up being the front return, they're tired and they got to go back and make a catch. So coach should do that and give them some game day realistic looks of, of going back there and catching it while they're tired. And um, so I think that's going to be important for those guys. And um, that's us as coaches, just trying to put them in the best, you know, game day situations we possibly can. So when they get in the game, they done done it before. And I think that's one of the things that we'll be looking forward to see in, in this Saturday at the, at, the, at the scrimmage. Gino. I don't know if you cross paths after games or on the recruiting trail with uh, Tony Elliott, but basically, uh, what, if any, kind of relationship do you and Tony have? Yeah. I know Tony very well. We did a bunch of speaking engagements together, but he's a great dude. And um, he's a great football coach, and he does a great job. But I know Tony very well. Phil? Uh, hey, T-Rob. From your position as a, a defensive coach facing a Mike Bobo offense, do you – how do you rate him as an offensive guru? Do you put him in the Steve Spurrier category? Is he uh, a guy from a defensive co coordinator standpoint that kind of will keep you up late at night trying to – figure out what he's thinking and the schemes that he might throw at you at any moment? Yeah, I really do. I think he's he does a great job. You know, you look at the offense. If I had to just say it reminds me of, you know, one of the New England Patriots type offense, a bunch of different personnel groupings, a bunch of different people on the field playing a bunch of different spots. And I think as a defensive coordinator, that's hard because you never know what's going to happen on third down. Um, they can be in 12, they can be in 21, they can be in different sets, and, and, and it's hard to, to, to prepare for all that stuff in the course of a game week. Um, I think he does a great job with the quarterback. I think, you know, just managing the game, managing practice. Um, we've been doing a little different. We do more move the ball than probably we had done in years past. Um, so we're just out there just playing football so our kids can get used to playing first down, second down, then running third down on the field. Um, normally in a college practice, you know, you have different groups where we'll just do all first and 10 or we'll just all third down. But I think it's been a little different this year with the, the amount of move the ball because we're so ahead as far as the installation is concerned based off, you know, doing all the OTAs and the different things we're able to do to them that we wasn't able to do in years past. Um, that we're playing a little more football than we normally would at this point. And um, our kids are doing a great job. So I'm getting a chance to not script practice and know what's coming you know, kind of go through it and understand what he's trying to do, what sets, what we're in. And um, I think he does a great job of doing that stuff. John Whittle. Yeah, what does the depth chart look like at, at the buck position? Who's kind of emerging there behind uh, JJ? Yes. So right now it's um, JJ is the buck um, and nickel, then probably it'll be Brad and Jordan Birch and then Hot Rod right there in the mix with those guys as well. But you know, J.J. has really stepped his game up. Um, he looks like a different football player, and um, he need to continue to do that. But I'm excited about his season, and um, he, he, he need to help us. He's talented enough to help us in a major way, and we're looking forward to him doing that. Colin Taylor, go ahead. Do you have a follow-up? No, thank you. Okay, Colin. Here, I kind of ask Mike the same question, but what's a successful year for this defense look like? And as you kind of evaluate – what's good and what's not good. What what statistics or numbers do you typically look at to kind of gauge whether or not you guys are having success? Yeah, you know what? The first thing I look at is it always stopping the run. Um, I think that's very important. Um, we need to do a better job of stopping the run and forcing more second and long situations or third and long situations. And um, I think we're more than capable of doing that. I think the discipline of, of guys doing what they're supposed to do and not, you know, doing crazy things, trying to make plays, and um, playing within the scheme of the defense, I think that's the most important thing. And uh, we talk in terms of the ball, you know, how many turnovers, and then third down and red zone efficiency. You know, we, we want to be 70% on third down, uh, being able to get people off. And then in the red area, we want to force guys to kick field goals. Um, over the years past, we played decent red zone defense. Um, third down and sometimes in some years, in the last four years, we struggled at times at doing that. And we got to do a better job, whether it's me calling it different, whether there's more pressure. Uh, or, or things like that, which we, we, we looked at, you know, during the off season and got a chance during this quarantine to go back and watch a bunch of different teams and what they were doing on third down and kind of went through a bunch of things like that. So we, 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 we'll, we'll look into some of those things as well. 
Any other questions for T-Rob? No. All right. We'll let All them right. go. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Y'all take it easy.